Well, hello, friends and followers. Before me now is a Drake T4XC. I bought this one off of eBay because I thought it looked very nice and it looked very clean. Of course, pictures can be deceiving. You never know what you're going to get. But this thing is amazing to me because I probably fixed like 20 Drakes by now and they've all kind of been tatty. And this one phew, looks like the guy never used it. It doesn't look hacked up or rusty or uh, the insides are gorgeous. So I think this is one I'm going to keep for sure. I've had that R4A radio that I like a lot, Drake R4A, and I didn't want to get rid of that one. And I needed, I wanted to buy a Drake transmitter to match that radio, to at least work with it. And this, I think, is going to fit the bill. So I've cleaned this thing a tiny bit, but not much. It came pretty much this clean. I had to buy a power supply and a speaker also because I sold off all that stuff around Christmas or a little before. There's a power supply that I got from a guy in Arizona from Patsy Junction. There's a speaker box and uh, nothing came in damaged. The guy was nice and took that um, AC4 out of the speaker box and he packed it separately and sure enough, it didn't destroy anything. And uh, well, it, the AC4 is powering this uh, T4XC, so I'm happy with that. So there's a guy in New Hampshire who's working on one of these and he, he emails me on eBay. And I feel bad for the guy because he's having some troubles. But anyway, I'll go through how to really just check this thing out if you receive one and, and what it's supposed to do. So you want to make sure you're in normal mode here in crystals. Go to NRM mode, first of all. And the way this tuning works in this thing, this is actually an audio drive for the microphone. And it also is an audio drive for a tone that is generated inside this guy, inside this um, T4XC and fed to the balance modulator for sideband. So that's why when you turn this volume, this gain control for your mic gain up, it makes the carrier, makes the plate voltage, the plate current, I'm sorry, rise because you're adding more sideband to the uh, sideband balance modulator. So that's how that works in tune mode. So anyway, you can start off on 80 meters and just see if you get a little bit of resonance. So I have the antenna on this thing, and I just want to show you how you can just check this thing out briefly. I've taken this thing all apart, as you can see, and I've cleaned I've cleaned up all the switches already with the detox it. So this is your friend when you have a Drake. You want to go through first and clean off every switch. You can see down there with detox it. And once you've done that, you can check the radio. So a first thing you want to do is make sure all the tubes are light up. Yep, we got final lights. I always replace these bulbs here with LEDs, LED bulbs from China. So I've done that with six volt LED bulbs. And you want to check all your tubes for lighting up. 12BY7s lit up, the mixers are lit up. And you can kind of just touch them too and make sure they're running hot. And that, that's how you know they're running. So make sure your filaments are running. That's the first thing you do. And then the second thing you do is once it's all done, put this thing on, on X here, which is how you tune this thing. You tune in that pass band, and then a little bit of gain there for the audio to go into the sideband balance modulator, and then go on separate here, and then go on to the 80 meter band, and put your pre-selector here um, around 80 meters, and go to tune, and tune this thing for a peak. If things are working, you'll see a peak here. There's a peak. Okay, so that's what you want. And then go to 40 meters and do the same thing, tune for a peak. So if that peak is there, that means at least you have some plate current and you have some drive, so that's a good thing. 40 meters, look for a peak. Yeah, there's a little one there. Not great, but a little one. Okay, that works. Yeah, 40 needs some tuning. So then we go to 20 meters here, look for a peak. And, uh, yep, it's healthy. 15 meters, look for a peak. Yeah, looks healthy. And go 10 meters, look for a peak. Not so great, but 10 meters is never great. So that needs some work. So anyway, 40 meters tweak. So you go back to 40 meters here and you tune for a peak and say, ah, oh, how can I fix this? Well, it might be just the uh, tuning on the side needs to be adjusted. So let's take a look at that. So 
tune mode, a little bit of a peak there. So crank it back a little bit so it's just barely idling, and then you can fiddle with the uh, gain. You can also put a light bulb in this thing and do it that way, but um, now you can go into side of this thing and look at the 40 meter and all the different uh, peaking for all the stages in this thing, and you'll see sevens on the bottom, and that's the one you want to hit for 40 meters. So now I guess I'm not prepped for this video. We're gonna find a decent screwdriver here. So I like these um, screwdrivers I got off of uh, Amazon, and these were at Fry's Electronics before Fry's closed. These are like $39. These are worth buying. I mean, German screwdrivers. Ouch. Um, German screwdrivers, very nice. These are pretty perfect for uh, tuning this radio, so. All right, we're back on tune mode now. A little bit of plate going on there. Crank it back a little bit so you don't hit, hit, hit the tubes too hard. So now I'm gonna tune each stage here for max plate current on 40. And you wanna be in the middle of the band. So 7.250 is the middle, I am thinking. Um, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So let's hit the 7.0 here. This radio is so gorgeous, I can't believe it for a radio. For a radio, I'm gonna peak that up a little bit. That was on the money. Usually you'll find one of these is, is a bit off a bit, so I just go through and peak these up. If this doesn't work, then there's low output somewhere in some stage. Okay, look at that, look at that, look at that. So that was off a tad, wasn't it? Now I'll dial it back a bit. Take the gain back a little bit so you don't burn your finals up. And the third one here. So this isn't rocket science, but it's what you do to make your radio work. And we'll try this third one here. And you might go through these a few times and peek them. Because they interact a little bit. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Alright, I guess I'm on there. And that one was... Well, that one's promising too. Look at that. Let's give this another tweak here. Wow. So those are both off a good bit on 40. Let's take the gain down a bit here now, again. So yeah, so 40, I think, in this thing is gonna have some power now again. And you want the 40 to power. 40 is probably your most useful band for day and night. So, I just can't get the screwdriver lined up on this thing right, because I can't see it. Here we go. Nope. Something this simple and I can't do it. Okay. This one is usually way off. Nope. On the money. Okay, so that said, on 40 now we fleeked all those and the rest look pretty good. I guess 10 was a little bit a little bit rough. So let's um and 10, if you got crystals in 10 that are higher up, you wanna Take the frequency up, but I got, let's go to 10 now and, and tweak that thing a bit. Um, so we'll take this thing off to uh, standby here. And go back to SSB. Light went off, there we go. 10 meters, click, click, click. And 10 meters on the pre-selector. There it is. Okay, a little bit dry. Go back to tune mode here. Look for a peak, dun dun dun. No peak there at all. Am I on tune? I'm on tune. More drive, there it is. Okay, a little bit of gain there, not a whole lot. Let's try and get 10 hop in here a little bit too. And the same deal. You just go along the 10 here, 28.5, which is on top, and you just tweak it a little bit. So that screwdriver's the wrong one. I wish I could see in here. I'm gonna put the light on top of the finals here and angle it down so I can see into this darn thing. Okay, now we can see a little bit, huh? 
and okay let's peek this one nope i'm not on there I'm really screwed over challenge tonight. I'm not sure why, but gotta get my eyes in there closer. That's what happens when you get a little older. You can't see anything. Okay, there it is. Let's tweak this guy a bit. It's still not on there. There. I fixed so many cars, so many radios, and that's not making much of a difference. So is it turning? So you get strange things like this that don't make sense sometimes. Getting my face right in here. And is it turning actually? It's turning. And it's not making, okay. So that is not making one heck of a lot of difference. That was all the way. That was all the way out. So that's not going to do for us too well. The next one we'll try. So that thing was cranked all the way out, and that's why that was kind of not working. Okay, the second one here. All the way out. Well, that's not looking too good, is it? So. These slugs might need to be adjusted a bit then, I wonder. Third one, I'm still hoping that one of these will work out here. Mm, tens is as good as it's gonna get. Fourth one, come on, fourth one, we need a win here. So I don't think tens gonna work out too well here. 10 meters, come on, nope. That's all we're gonna get, so. It's got real low drive on 10. Which is a shame. So anyway, this is a preliminary look at this radio. I haven't tried fixing it yet. There could be week two in here that needs a little bit of help. Because the higher the frequency goes, the better the tube's gonna be. You need a little more output on those frequencies. So anyway, that's that. Off a of tune here, let's go to, um, 40 meters and try it for a heavy tune here. Okay, so let's try it for real now. Take our load down, take our plate right about there. And I think that's about right for the plate. Let's hit 40 up here. Let's see, come on 40, I'm on 40. There we go, there's 40 right there. Okay, dip it. Yeah, she'll dip, she'll dip. Load it up. Dip it, load it. How, now, look at the symmetry of this thing. Does it have good symmetry? I guess there's no watt meter, so I don't know. You can press this in for power, I think. Yeah, there's the power. All right. So there's 40. Um, the question now is, does it work with a mic? Okay, so microphone is here somewhere. Ah... Uh, Hikes. Can't even tell where the microphone could be here. So maybe this video is gonna be over. I was using that with a microphone recently. And the mic is most likely gone. There's the, uh, this, this thing has taken a lot of my time, this uh, Railway 2 radio. I'm, I'm going to try and finish it next week. This has eaten up a few weeks of time getting it working. I finally got it going somewhat, so that's been kind of fun. So, But I think I'm going to have to stop working on radios. It just takes way too much time. I was looking at doing this for retirement, but it's like I've kind of done it now for a year and a half, and I think that's going to be the end of it. All right, microphone is definitely gone. Can't check the radio on sideband, but since the uh, tune mode works, I think sideband is probably okay. So that's going to be it for my video. Oh, we can go through the bottom of the radio. Let's do that. So I got a friend in New Hampshire 
working on one of these, so let's go through the VF, VF, the PTO. His, P, his PTO doesn't work right, so I want to show him how to uh, test the PTO. So, to test the PTO on his radios, I use the, excuse me, I use the RTL STR dongle. And that is this little guy here, an RTL SDR dongle. This is like a service monitor, more or less, for me. So, at least for HF. So, I'm going to bring this thing up on the computer now and show you how this is done. Um, keyboard. So, I use Cubic SDR. I guess I gotta be, there it comes. Okay, so KVSDR, we choose this guy down here. And I have it in QADC mode, which you need to get it to receive an HF well and start it. There it is, it's maximized this thing here. All right, so RTSDR is running. So this PTO, 4.9 to 5.5. So you want to be in that range on your SDR to hear this thing go. Let's do that. So I see something at 4.0 there, but I'm not going to worry about that. If I wiggle this thing here, that's not it. So let's go to uh, 4.9 to 5.5. Need the keyboard here. Okay. 5.5. Sorry, this video is not very good <laughs> as far as being perfect, but it's, it'll do the job, right? So there's 5.3, and I'm thinking that's 5.2. That's probably the middle of the band right there. So you want to see what's jumping around here. And so what I always do with this thing is, here's my RTL SDR. Here's the coax out of it. You can see I got a coax wire coming out of it. I just put a jumper lead on here like so, and then you can sniff. Now, don't touch this lead to anything with voltage. You know, blow up your RTL SDR, but you can just wrap it around the, uh, T, the T4XC PTO here. Just, you can even attach it to this little guy here. Just attach it here, because this thing has some RF on it. So put it on the back, on the back uh, slug on this thing like that. There, that'll show you a signal. Now, take a look at the uh, screen here. And I'm in FM mode. I wanna go to AM mode here. There's AM. Okay, let's see what we have here. Anything at all. Yeah, there it is. So, so there's your PTO right there. You see that? That's your PTO. And you wanna see that little guy walking around and then you know you're working. So that's the first signal you wanna check. You need three signals to make this thing work. That's the first one, okay? The second signal comes from the crystals on the bottom. So let's flip this guy over without me getting shocked and, and take this off, because we know that works. And flip this guy over. And hopefully not destroy anything. So we verified the PTO works. The next thing to verify are these crystals here. So these crystals uh, on 40 meters, um, which is what I'm checking. So 80 is going to be the lowest crystal. There's not, not a crystal for 160, so 80 will be the lowest one. So I'm looking at these. These are all clean, so I can read them. So there's like a 39. What's the lowest one here? 14.5. So the 14.5 crystal there, this one right here, is going to matter for your uh, 40 meter. And that's going to be like an injection of frequency. So you really want to check that one and make sure that's where that's frequency number two. So let's now move this thing to 14. And we'll check that one. Okay, 14... 14, 14, 14. 
I think that was 14.5, wasn't it? 14.5. 14.5, are you 14.5? Yeah, it's 14.5. So the 80 meter injection crystal on the T4XC is 14.5. That's right here, right? There's 14.5. Okay, so there's 14.5 right about there. And these straight crystals are pretty nice. They hold up pretty good. I'm trying to move this thing on to 14.5 here. Okay, there it is. So now, on 40 meters, that crystal should be firing up. So take your lead now and put it near the crystal and see if you get a, a reading. Okay, 14.5. Oh, wait a minute. That's going to be 80 meters. 80 meters is 14.5, so I'm wrong. I hate being wrong. Okay, so... 18.1 is the one for 40 meters. Sorry about that. There's see the 18.1 right there. That's 40 meters. So let's go to that one. Because I'm checking 40 here for a signal. So 18.1. And you'll probably see it fire up here. 18.1. 18.1. Eight, yep, look at that. So that's solid. So there's the... Uh, there's the crystal right there, 18.1. You can see them there. So if we flick the band now, it should disappear, right? Watch this. Flick, flick, see? It disappears. So that's the second signal you need. And the third signal you need is going to be the sideband injection signal or sideband signal, which <coughs> I'm still a bit fuzzy about how that one works, but... That one is going to come from a crystal around here somewhere, around the back of it, so I know the other... Okay, yeah, so there it is. There's the... Uh, and this is also the injection frequency right there. If you see that little trimmer capacitor here. And that guy there is for your sideband balance. So there's a 